In 1905, there were almost 20 deaths in high school and college football. Because of this, there was a huge public pressure on whether or not the game would even still exist. From that crisis came the forward pass, came helmets, came all these changes to the game. And I see that story as a great way of looking at what we have right now. How big of an epidemic is concussion in, in football right now? It's, it's huge. 96% of the brains they examined from the NFL, 79% overall football players that have CTE. San Francisco 49ers linebacker Chris Borland is retiring at age 24 because he's concerned about the long-term effects of the head trauma that football can cause. This was a little shocking to me that, that I couldn't remember my daughter playing youth soccer. It's huge, huge decision has just been made in that NFL concussion lawsuit. Everyone knew there was going to come a day of reckoning. We haven't really known until recently how serious concussions might be. We went to a place called the Burke Institute to talk to researchers there about how they're using virtual reality technology to track changes in their brain caused by all of those hits. The current state of the NFL is that we are only treating the big hits. The things that cause a concussion matter. But the scary truth is that every player that steps on the field for an NFL game they're sustaining many, many little hits. These players are taking 90 hits per game. So this is amounting to, in a season, more than a thousand hits every year. And that's really worrying us because then they're not showing acute signs of a concussion. So they go under the doctor's radar. To optimize player welfare, what we really need to do is start to understand how all of these little hits might be adding up to a chronic long-term brain injury or, or syndrome. What we're really trying to do with these tests is hack the brain. The first way that we do that is with smooth eye tracking. What's going to happen is this system is going to track my eye movements and so long as I am following the scene in the way that we want the person to follow the scene, which is a smooth pursuit movement, I'll hear music to sort of give me the indication that I'm doing the right thing. So what we're looking at here is the output of the Oculus Rift. When we go and take a look at post-concussive blow, what we can see is a lot of sort of variance in the data set that we're collecting, indicating that he took this hit and he immediately was very, very unsteady. And the Oculus Rift was capable of detecting that unsteadiness and, and showing us how different he was from baseline. In the future, what we're absolutely going for is before every game, after every game, do this five minute thing. It uploads your data to the cloud and we know how you're doing. That's the way that we're going to influence the field. And that's the way that we're going to be able to make data driven decisions about returning to play or not returning to play is by understanding each player inside and out. But what about preventative tracking? How can we monitor hits before they actually produce that brain injury? We checked in with a company called I1 Biometrics that's making a mouth guard which has accelerometers within it. And using that, they can track exactly what hits people undergo. Think of it like a smartphone in your mouth. It's got all of the same technology, microprocessors, accelerometers, gyroscopes, batteries, antennas, etc. Anytime they take a hit, above magnitude, it alerts the sideline staff in real time. So the athletic trainers and medical staff know that player just took a hit. Shows them where it happened, how hard that hit was. So this is the impact lab we use to basically verify that our sensor works. Headform has a mouth guard in it, and when we hit this, they'll get, uh, the mouth guard will register an impact. The reason that the, the mouth is such a great place to measure head trauma is it's actually inside the player's head. So everywhere that your upper jaw goes, your skull goes, it's firmly affixed to that player's head. So unlike putting a sensor in a helmet, a helmet moves independently of the player's head. So all those things introduce variables, all those things introduce less accuracy. The reason that tracking impacts is so important is we're able to understand the full history of that player. So what has their exposure been for the lifetime of their athletic career? From that, we now know, you know, is this player at greater risk than his or her peers? What does that look like? How do we treat this athlete appropriately so that they're cared for correctly? We'll have players where you'll see impacts across the forehead, which is actually good because they're playing heads up football. Um, you'll see other guys that have a lot of their hits on the top of the head. You know, that helps, helps coaches and trainers identify players that might need some work on their techniques. 
Everybody's been focused on making equipment stronger. Nobody's made anything smarter. But eventually, I would expect that you're gonna see many elements of a player's gear become not just stronger gear, but smarter gear. So we're entering the age of smart football equipment. And anyone from researchers at Ivy League universities to designers in Silicon Valley are interested in trying to find a way to solve the sort of problem that concussion in football is. We focused on helmet design because we're in a collaboration with Lawrence Livermore National Labs and our effort is to look at the microstructure of material because that microstructure is effectively going to allow us to double or triple the cushioning effect of a helmet. In some sense you could have a smart helmet in the future something that can sense an impact and relocate that load depending upon the nature of the impact, whether it's a direct impact or a glancing impact. This is an example of a micro lattice. This is made through 3D printing. It's a metal, though it's lighter than air. It absorbs energy and returns to its original form. What we're looking at are materials 5, 10, 25 years out, and those materials will be able to sense, respond, and adapt during play. They may not look from the outside all that different than today's helmets, but the inside and their microstructure will be completely different. But what if new materials and smart technology on its own is not gonna solve this problem? Perhaps we're gonna need to make radical changes to the game. We checked in with a study at the University of New Hampshire that's looking at what happens when you take the helmets away from the players. The HUT program is, is prescribed throughout the course of the season where players will participate in tackling and blocking drills without helmets and shoulder pads in place. It just teaches your kids that you know the head is, and the helmet aren't weapons. Our tackling's improved, our technique on how to tackle's improved, and our you know, blows to the head have, have lessened while we're doing this really caught the kids attention that was the thing after we started doing it caught the kids attention that they're doing this for a reason and the reason is a pretty good one i think what we're doing as a culture in football right now is is, is good everybody's identifying it they understand the consequences I think 50 years from now, concussions will still be an issue, but I don't think they'll be as large of an issue. We're at a critical point right now where the game has not become significantly safer, but our understanding of injury has increased exponentially. That's leading to innovation, and so I think you'll see less issues in the future, but you can't take the violence out of the game. When a big hit happens to a key player at Super Bowl 100, the coaches on the sideline will know immediately exactly what's going on in that player's brain they're gonna be able to decide whether or not that player needs to be taken out. And if that player does need to be taken out, perhaps they go to the sideline, they take a medication, and maybe they're back for the second half. Just because we have all this technology doesn't mean that in 50 years time, football won't still be football. Instead, it means that we can use that technology to make the game safer.